my dissertation was creating dances from dreams. And I have danced most all of my life as a child on a 200-acre dairy farm <laughs> in the wheat fields. Um, by adolescence, it was modern dance. It was improvisation, creating dance. And so as I, um, I now teach dance at Berry College, it's a private liberal arts college north of Atlanta. And there I am artistic director, choreographer, and also founder of the Berry College Dance Troupe. And the images you'll see are dancers from the company. Now sometimes there is the question of putting this material on students and, and the power differential. And I'll tell you that all of the students auditioned for the dance. I had 50 students audition. I took 10 for the original piece. Um, and the name of the dance is Out of the Nightmare into the Light. For years, I had very intense dreams, um, very emotionally engaging to the point that I had to do something with them. And to, to just write them down, to just talk to you know, an analyst, seemed to not really meet the dream in the way that I understood. Um, and so for me, working with images and feelings through my body, through movement, is, is what came to be my truth, um, actually long before I entered into this program. And some of these dreams um, were nightmares. This is the first third of this dance, is nightmares. Then it morphed into the transformation. The really difficult uh, piece of this choreography was coming into wholeness. The first go round uh, back in 2004 when I created this dance, I don't think I ever got near that, but that was the goal. And of course, that's parallel to individuation. Um, but this dance was 15 minutes long. It's just the beginning of the data, but the images you see are part of the data of the research um, because they, they're holding the place for the, the dance itself. Sometimes I was just totally intrigued by the dream that I had because it was offering me information I'd never even heard of. Names of gods and goddesses I had maybe read somewhere or maybe it was just an archetypal image that was presenting itself to me. So there was a lot of research that happened um, just in dealing with the dreams themselves. And then working, again, with my students, this barrel was a central image of one of the most hellacious nightmares I had at the time. And it's, it held center stage for the entire 15-minute dance. Initially, this young woman in the pilot study was carried in, kicking, not screaming since it's dance, um, and thrown into this barrel, and the lid was slammed down. And then we proceed to see more and more images, very confined women, confined in the barrel, confined in the shroud, confined in my psyche, right? Um, these images, for me, reverberated throughout my body. Um, they were somatic dreams. And so my way of working with these images then was to go into the studio and dance them alone. Once I decided to morph it into an actual dance, then I'm working with students, sometimes directly with my, my dream journal, um, explaining the dream image. Sometimes Hillman talks about very fuzzy imagery in dreams. Sometimes it was with the students that I would describe what was going on, and their response would create the choreography. I didn't have a particular image in mind. It was more of a feeling base in the dream. This becomes Shadow Woman. She is she who shoves the uh, victim into the barrel. In the dream um, dance, I went with Hillman's idea, I guess, of personifying the, the dream images and creating them into characters. And so throughout this process, um, what I came to realize uh, with Elizabeth's guidance is I was really creating a very psychodynamic field. And so I did talk to the students about creating a ritual at the beginning of rehearsal and at the end. But I will tell you we were in rehearsal 14 weeks prior to the 15th week of performance. So we worked together for a very long time. Um, the 
these white costumes that the two figures over the barrel are wearing come out of those of you who know Martha Graham's Lamentation, this image of being confined in the fabric. So even with the costuming, I wanted this sense of containment. Um, the dancer to your left is the objectified woman. In many ways, you could also say it was kind of a, an animal woman figure. Lots of projection onto her. You'll see her movement often is contracted inward, protecting her core. And then again, you have this trinity of women. Early on, this is in the nightmare phase. Now, as I worked with this dream and many others, I had this pilot dance that I created in 2004. And that was my premier exploration of this material. And then I recreated the dance. And in both cases, I had data opportunities from the dancers in the pilot study as well as the dancers who were in the dissertation dance most recently performed. And the way that we gather this data is that, of course, I had my dreams. That was part of the research data. I had field notes uh, that I was writing as I was creating the dance. And I was looking at this, um, this sense that Jung was constantly uh, describing of the creative aspect of dreams. And now, of course, we have the Red Book so we have evidence we have, can fall into his creative experience. So um, I had that sort of sense of validation, but I wasn't always convinced of it, I will admit. And that comes up in my field notes a lot. But my role was a dreamer, it was researcher, um, <coughs> choreographer, but also facilitator. One of the things I did was um, invited in all of the former dancers who create in this first piece. And they watched the initial performance, um, Saturday night's performance, and then I interviewed them about how is it to, um, to sit in the chair, you know, to be in the audience after you've been in the dream dance. What did you feel physically? What was your response? Because I was looking for their somatic responses. With the dissertation dancers, the same question came. Just answer, you know, talk to me about when I danced the nightmares. I, what did you, what did you feel? What did you experience? What was the interaction you had? You can't see them very well, but there's three men in this pilot study who were the dark men of the psyche. Um, and uh, they played a pretty significant role, but they also transformed. The big issue for this was not staying stuck in the nightmare. Um, and so I also realized that this altar, which is what the barrel turned into, needed to transform too. I couldn't keep that negative energy being held in the barrel uh, while I wanted the dancers to transform. And uh, that's a big goal here, but it was also a big challenge. And so this data collection came from interviewing pilot dancers after they watched the dissertation dance, interviewing the dissertation dancers after they performed, and also then inviting both parties to, to write thought letters or write reaction papers to what came up for them. My initial research question was about the lived experience of embodying these dream images. So I was working with phenomenology. What, what is your embodied experience? I also invited members of the, uh, the audience to, to write to me. I didn't do an interview with you know, a thousand people. Um, they wouldn't all come back. <laughs> um, but I did want to also have the voice of the audience because, of course, they have a very different experience than those of us who are backstage. And um, I'm going to be sharing some of those voices here. Of course, as researcher, my dreams were a piece of this data, and for me, a big issue was what can we learn? Hopefully, we can learn something about how, how dreams are a creative resource. There's, there's a lot of data. My lit review is full of examples of that, but um, not so much as far as in dance. 
yes, tends to be a little less verbal, you know, by what was Graham's statement. If I could explain it, I wouldn't have made a dance, you know. <laughs> but now I'm trying to uh, give us all a voice as dancers, um, and, and that was my goal. So I was working with um, hermeneutical phenomenology, so I went from this place of this is how it felt for me, this is how the dancers felt, to trying to make meaning of it. And again, this issue of enhancing the relationship with the unconscious by embodying the dream images. But how did that affect me? How did it affect both sets of dancers? And what did the audience say about that? Um, and I can say I'm, I was thrilled with the quality of response I got eventually. After I sifted many, many, many weeks through all of the 20-year-olds talking back and forth to each other about, you know, silly stuff, as well as once they dropped into it and gave me some really important uh, data. The limitations in this study, of course, were the numbers. When you're working with uh, creating a dance, you can have 430. Participants. So I only had 10 dancers in the original pilot study dance, and I had 11 in uh, the dissertation dance. Um, in the audience, I think I had about, about 43 people who gave me written response, maybe some more than that. So it's kind of a self-selection process. Of course, the dancer is um, self-selected because they auditioned, but they also self-selected because they could choose to show up for the interview or not. Um, they can choose to email me responses or not. This image um, of the dark man in the psyche came from the students. One of the things I did very early on is tell them images I was a mat that I had experienced and you can see him, whoosh, have kind of one of the men in the audience said, oh, you've got ninjas in your dance. <laughs>